Good evening, parents and loved ones, and welcome to our Kids for Christ Christmas play. Entitled, What Would You Give Baby Jesus? We have worked very hard over the past couple of weeks, preparing your lines and songs to put into words what God wants us to say. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show that God has prepared for you. Hello everyone, Miss Jones invited me to your class this morning to read from the Bible, Matthew 1, 18 through 2, 12, and have a little discussion about baby Jesus. Oh, I love that story. It's from the Gospel of Matthew. The story in Luke is more familiar, I know, but here's the story about the wise men from the East. No one really knows where they came from, but what's important is that they recognize the king had been born, and they were really the first ones to worship him as such. But we want to know what you all think of their gifts. Gold, well, yes, that was a very kingly gift. And frankincense was a type of rare incense, and myrrh was a type of perfume that was also rare. But we want to know what you all think. How about you, Lucy? What would you bring to baby Jesus? That's a hard question, Miss Jones. Hmm. Do you think Jesus may have wanted some candy? I love Tootsie Rolls and sneakers. Well, Lucy, babies don't have teeth. Tara, what, what would you give baby Jesus? He was a baby. I guess he didn't really know or care what the wise men brought him. I mean, babies don't really know. So what would you have given him? Something he would need, like diapers, one with three fastable tape tabs so Mary wouldn't have to waste any. So, Lucy, have you thought of anything else for baby Jesus besides candy? How about spaghetti? You don't need teeth for spaghetti. Oh, my Lucy. Steve, what about you? Well, he didn't have very much. People were poor then, so I gave stuff I could just have. Lost some cars and chess and video games. How about a pinball machine for when he gets older? Okay, Peter. Anyone else? Kristen? Straddles, they had a lot of sand around there. Maybe some sand toys and money so he can have a bank account and go to college when he grows up. Jennifer? A room of his own that he wouldn't have to share with his brother. I have to share in my room with my sister, and boy, she's a pain. She's always in my stuff. What do you think's the best? How about a camera? We are coming up with some great ideas. What about you, Ramona? Well, we don't really know what Jesus' friends look like. If Jesus had a camera, he could have taken pictures. But babies don't need cameras. I mean when he gets older. But who cares about that? He could have got his own camera if he wanted to when he was older. Yeah, babies need lots of clothes, undershirts, and socks, and sleepers. Jesus was poor. It'd be better to give him stuff he needed, he needed as a baby. I know, I'll give him a dog. What, Steve? A big furry dog like my dog, only his mother let him keep him. No, like mine, I had to give him to the dog pound because he shed his hair all the time. A dog really cares about you. He won't have run away like Jesus' friends did when he was killed. Dogs hang with you. They love you no matter what. I would have got Jesus a puppy, and I bet Mary wouldn't have minded either. Dogs don't care what you look, look like or anything. They love you no matter what. A big dog. I bet the bad man who crucified Jesus wouldn't have done it if he had had a big dog. How about ice cream? 
Okay, that's a little something to everything to eat. You have that right, Lucy. Mmm. How about a nice life? Jesus had so many bad things happen to him. Oh, I know, I know. A ball in a bat so he played with the other boys. Hey, how about a piano and lessons so we could always have music? Maybe the other boys would laugh at him while he practiced instead of played ball. But in the end, music makes you happy, you know? You haven't said anything, Michael. What would you bring to baby Jesus? Now Michael had been thinking what everyone else had been talking. Everyone else's gifts seemed nice enough for an ordinary baby. But the baby Jesus was the son of God. With God for his father, what could he possibly need? God surely wouldn't send his son into the world with angels singing and a great star glowing in the sky and then forget to send enough diapers. And it... And he did have clothes. It said in the Bible that he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. So what could Michael give the baby? Michael, what would you give baby Jesus? I don't know. I mean, he really didn't need anything, but he gave his life for us. I sort of don't know. What do you think that means? He gave his life for us. I don't know. Everyone always talks about it, like at Easter. But, well, I guess I don't know what that means either. Let's all think a little bit more about we, what we bring baby Jesus. Next week, we'll make a list. What about if you all can ask me what they bring baby Jesus? And next week, we'll make a nice long list. Have a good week, everybody. Great idea, Miss Jones. Have a great week.
question of what to give Jesus bothered Michael. Before church that Sunday, he stopped everyone he knew to ask each person what he or she would bring. Mr. Cassidy, if you had to give a gift to Jesus when he was born, what would you give him? Music. It's the only art that can make you happy when you are sad or make you dance or make you thoughtful when you don't feel like being serious. And you can carry it with you wherever you go. You never have to leave a song at home because you can't carry it. So I give Jesus music. I've got to run. See you at playtime, Michael. Pastor Edwards, got a minute? Sure, Michael, what is it? If you had to give a gift to baby Jesus, what would you give? That's a really good question, Michael. Well, the first thing I think of is a crib, but maybe it's not but maybe it's not something he could do without. It might make him more comfortable while he was a baby, but then what could he do with it? And there are lots of things that are more valuable than just being comfortable. It's nice to be warm and to sleep on something soft, but it's not necessary. Well what would you give then? I give the gift and harmony of everyone in the whole world getting along with one another, being fed of one another, and doing everything possible to get along with every, everyone else. I know, that's, I know that's what Jesus came to give us, but would it be nice for him to have some of it happening while he lived here with us? Are you doing this for Sunday school or for yourself? Both, I guess. I really don't know. It just seems important to me. Thanks a lot. Anytime, Michael. Miss Marlene, you got a minute? Yes, I have a few minutes before the babies start arriving. What can I help you with? If you had to give a gift to baby Jesus, what would you bring? Let you! Well, in the condition I'm in, I wouldn't give baby Jesus a, a sick free life. Let you! Don't you think it would be great to never be sick? Service call, I think I hear baby cry. Let you! Thank you, Miss Marlene. I hope you feel better. Brother Morris, got a minute? What's up, Michael? And some days people are thinking about what we'd give baby Jesus. All right. Like the wise men. And I was wondering what you'd give him. All right, I don't know, Michael. Can't you think of anything either? It's not that I can't think of anything, but I can think of, no but I can think of too many things, and none of them seem appropriate. What would you give? That's just it. I don't know. Sometimes the question is more important than the answer. You may never discover an answer, but you may discover some important things for your searching. Keep thinking. Excuse me, Mr. Williams. Can I speak to you a minute? Yes, Michael. What's up? If you could give a gift to baby Jesus, what would you give? Well, what the question? Hmm. I'll give him lots of vans. Vans, vans, vans. That way he can bring more and more kids to church. There are just so many parents that won't bring their kids to church. There's not a great, greater burden than to bring the children to the Lord. That's something to think about. Yes, many kids over the year have said that just Jesus into their heart. Their entire families have got to know the Lord. I'm going to leave it at that. So I've got to make a second run before the services begin. Got to go. Thank you for your time. Music, the gift of world harmony, and one undecided if neither the pastor, bus driver, nursery worker, nor the, ne nor the deacon knew what to bring the Christ child, even with all their education and experience, Michael wondered how he was supposed to figure it out. Well, Brother Morris had said to keep thinking, so Michael did. Church was beginning and Michael joined his friends in the choir. This Sunday was going to be devoted to the Sunday school pageant and everyone had a part.
began wondering what an angel would bring to the Christ child. As he was thinking, he imagined what the angels would say. Faith, hope, love, and the greatest of these is love. Love is patient and kind, never hurtful, always giving freely for the benefit of all humankind. God's love is God's gift to the world and God's commitment. Jesus came that we might see perfect love here on earth. Faith, hope, and love. But apparently the angels had already given those gifts 2,000 years ago because Jesus had displayed all those gifts during his lifetime. Mary and Joseph were looking at their child they had been blessed with. Everyone prepared to greet the, ch to greet the child with songs. what these important characters from the nativity scene would have given Jesus. I would bring him a lamb. I would bring him a sheep to make a blanket to keep him warm in the cold night. If I could, I would bring him all the stars from heaven. Whether the real gives light, it's still not big enough to light people's hearts. I'll bring him a dog who protects our sheep from us and give him protection and good for as well. Well, thought Michael, I haven't, got a, I haven't got a lamb or a star or a dog to give, but I like the idea that the last shepherd would give his very own dog to the child. At least he wouldn't go out and buy one. Maybe the best gifts we give is ourselves. Now it's time for the three kings to arrive.
knew what the kings were bringing, so I didn't bother to think what the wise men would bring Jesus. Besides, a crowd was due to arrive from Bethlehem at any moment, and Michael wanted to know what the locals would have brought baby Jesus. The crowd began to talk about what they would bring baby Jesus. I would bring him money. Everyone needs money. I would bring him a necklace. It's the key to can away for emergencies. I have a blanket to give. I would bring him cookies. I would cover him to a house like this one out of wood. I would give him my candy cane. Church was almost over, and Michael still had no idea what to give baby Jesus. All the gifts, all the gifts mentioned, mentioned so far were nice if the baby were just an ordinary baby. But this is God's only son, who was born to save humanity from the consequences of its sins. Jesus would die, give his own life for the sake of others, and what gift of Michael's could possibly approach in such a, in value to such a sacrifice? Excuse me, God. Now Michael's prayers weren't prayers as a lot of adults think of them. He didn't, he didn't have a format or know any big words. He talked to God just as he would have talked to his earthly father. Excuse me, God, but I don't know what to give Jesus. I know he died for me, I guess to show how much you and he love me. But isn't that sort of too much? I know you love me, but how can I show you I love you back? Michael was secretly afraid that God would want him to die to prove his love. And Michael didn't want that. Nobody died for being a Christian these days. Maybe there are some places they still do, but I'm not really sure. But God loves his children, Michael reasoned. Michael's own, da Michael's own daddy had said that God wanted his children to be happy, just like your regular human father. So God wouldn't... So God wouldn't want any of, ch of his children to die. Well, that was a relief. But Jesus gave his life, his own life for us. There was no getting around that. But maybe Michael thought, Maybe I could be a pastor and spend my whole life telling everyone about Jesus' gift to us. And Michael wondered what it would take to be a pastor. Probably lots of school and college and heaven knew what else, but... Just tell me before next Sunday, God. Because I have to know. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's, wel let's welcome Mr. Smith back to our classroom. Now, what are some of the gifts that you discovered that people would bring to baby Jesus? Thank you, Miss Jones. Miss Jones, let's write their answers on the board. So, Kristen, go ahead. I asked a lot of my friends at school, and they said, a teddy bear, a Christmas turkey, a pony, a really nice house with a playroom, money to buy stuff, and a car. Which was the best? A nice house with a playroom. Okay, Peter. I didn't ask too many people. Why not? I didn't want them to laugh at me. Nobody talks about Jesus at the playground at my school. But you did ask a few people. What did they say? Well, my sister said an ABC book, and my brother Kurt said a playpen, and my little sister said pajamas. Which was the best? I don't know. They all just seemed pretty silly to me. That's all right, Peter. <laughs> Now, Lucy, what did you come up with? Well, since the baby is unable to eat Tootsie Rose candy, spaghetti, ice cream, and probably not pizza, I decided I'd get him a, I decided I'd get him a cow so he could have a lot of milk. My mom tells me milk makes you go big and strong. Great answer, Lucy. Okay, Jennifer? Well, pajamas, a Christmas tree for his house, and my brother said sister just like me. Which do you think was the best? A Christmas tree for his house, I think. Okay, Ramona? I got a lot. I asked everybody. A DVD player? My brother said that. Mr. Michael said silver or gold. Maybe a nice laugh. That's a good idea. Okay, Stephen? I didn't ask anybody. Why not? I don't know. Well, what do you think is a good gift? People who really love you like a mom who isn't, or a dad who takes a place, or a grandmother who loves you no matter how bad you are. That's important, isn't it, to have people that love you? But Steve, you have to remember, even if people don't love you, God does. Okay, Tara? 
Well, I got a lot. Some of the stuff is stupid, so I won't even go into it. But some of the good stuff was <clears throat> a bank of his own. A bank of his own, a guitar, money, a grandma and grandpa, flowers, movies, a VCR, a horse, games, soda, a Rolex watch. I'm not finished. A nice teacher, a pool, his own room, a bunny, matchbox cars. Good idea, Tara. I'm not finished. <laughs> Stuff rich people have, all the toys in the world, stuffed animals, snow, a camel to get around on like at the zoo. What's the best? I still think diapers or dress for Mary. Get out of my way. Okay, Michael, all those things are nice, but anybody could have them. Jesus gave his life for us. He died just so we could see how much God loves us. And there's nothing that we've thought of to match that. So I think the best gift to give is myself. You know, to do what God really wants me to do, no matter how hard it is. God made me able to talk, so maybe I can talk about God. God I can sing. God made me able to do that, so I, maybe I can sing about God. God made me. God made all of us. I think God just lived the way God wants me to do, to show how good God has been to me. I mean, if it weren't for God, I wouldn't be here. Nobody would. But I guess it's not much of an answer. No, Michael, that's a very good answer. Was the night before Christmas when all through heaven's house all the angels were stirring the Savior's birth to announce. The heavenly hosts were getting ready to sing in the hope that their anthem would let true freedom ring. The shepherds were keeping their sheep late that night while the provision from heaven hung just out of sight. Mary was tired from traveling all day while Joseph was searching for a place they could stay. All Joseph could find was a room in a barn, but at least for the night Mary's feet would be worn. The time of her delivery would be here soon as the light of the day gave way to the moon. 
The Son of the Highest he shall be called, a, so a horn of salvation given for all. He will, sit on the, he will sit on the throne of his father David, and one day all men will sing his praises. The promised Messiah from a time long ago was now ready to be given to the world down below. The promise of his kingdoms reigning on earth to govern our hearts and to show men their worth. The shepherds were resting, the sheep were silent that night, when the angel appeared and, called, and caused them great fright. Fear not, said the angel, I bring, I bring tidings of great joy, which will be for all people, so all may rejoice. Your Savior, your Savior has been born in the city of David, which is Christ the Lord, who has come to save us. He will make the dark places lighted within, take away all guilt, and do away with all sin. Peace on earth, the angel said, all is well with mankind, for the Father has sent his gift right on time. The gift of forgiveness given for the gift of forgiveness for all to enjoy, his salvation and blessings for you to employ. You'll find a babe draped in swaddling clothes. His name will be Jesus, and he is God's love exposed. Then the angel was joined by the heavenly host, giving glory to God in the highest, as together they rose. The shepherds heard them exclaim as they rose out of sight, God's forgiveness to all, and to all a very good night. Wow. <laughs> I mean, there is no... Okay, this is the first time we get to look at the auditorium. All right. There's a lot of you here tonight. Let's give them a big hand one more time. I could, uh, I could tell you that I know of other places in the state of Kentucky that where kids memorize their lines and do an entire Christmas play, but I'd be lying to you. I don't know of another church or another thing that goes on like this. And it's not because it doesn't, it's just I don't know about it. So I'll just stick with that. But these, these kids are awesome. I mean, we send home some papers and things like that, and, and we give them the hope that they get to come up and share their talent with you guys and, and to do it for the Lord. That'll be the first thing they tell you. And they do such a magnificent job. I mean, we started this out, Jesse, or excuse me, yeah, Jesse, I'm going to call him Michael. Jesse, um, he's got the most lines in this whole play, and they're paragraphs long. I, I know that he probably sat in his room and forgot to play and eat and shower and all those other things and just studied his lines all the time. And then he broke his ankle, and so we, we, we worked a wheelchair into this business. And then he gets up out of the wheelchair and walks around. It's a miracle. He's healed. So, 
It's a lot of fun. And you know what? We had a bunch of firsts in this time uh, with our Christmas play. We've been doing this for 12 years. And out of the 12 years, this group right here, I, I'm not knocking any of the other years. And I'll probably say this because it probably gets better anyways. But they did an amazing job. I mean, they were doing this two weeks ago. I was ready to do this Christmas play back in November. And so, wow, great job, you guys. Um, and what a great, great time of year. This is my favorite time of the year. Um, well, one of my favorite times of the year. I love to go to Cocoa Beach, and that's uh, summertime really awesome. But, but this time of year is really special because this is the time that, uh, that get, we get to focus on Jesus. And the kids, I mean, we our, our, our lessons and things like that that we prepare, we actually shut Children's Church down. And for the last couple uh, months, we didn't even do Children's Church other than work through the play. And now uh, most kids didn't want to be a part of the play. And that was okay because we don't want to force anybody to do anything they don't want to do. But this group right here raised their hand, said, we want to do a Christmas play. And uh, we told them that on December the 9th, and this was back in October, that on December the 9th, they would be preaching the message tonight. They would be sharing the story of Jesus. And they did a magnificent job doing that. Now, it's a little kitted down, but that's okay. And they love it like that. And this is how we teach them in children's church. It's their age level. It's their age group. But guess what? Even as an adult, I can get it too. And so it's, it's nice that it's easy and that this time of year reminds us of Jesus' love for us. And we had a bunch of firsts. I mean a bunch. We got kids up here that normally would not speak in a room of 1,000, let alone come up on stage and be Joseph. And uh, we have a bunch of kids here uh, that uh, have to come from uh, uh, almost all over the, the, the place here. And Carl could probably tell you how far out he drives to get them. And he, they get here, and their parents uh, make sure that they're here on time. And this is the first time some of them ever stood on a stage in this church or any kind of thing to, to share their talent with you guys and to give it to the Lord. And so I'm really excited about that. I'm very impressed. But I also remember that this is a service. This isn't just a hangout, and this isn't uh, a night where we just get to look at our pretty children, even though what a wonderful night this is. But there's a message in behind all of this. And that story is about Jesus. And that God loved us so much that he sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him would be saved. And he sent him... You know, Jesus, I mean, that was just a miracle how that all happened. Here he is, we get to see, well, you know, Maddie's version of Jesus is this little baby doll up here. But, you know, at Christmas we think of a poor, beautiful little eight-pound, seven-ounce Jesus and his golden fleece diapers and, you know, and he's so special and pretty. But that's not what that's really all about. I mean, we remember this time because this is when Jesus was born, but we really remember what he did later on. And what he did later on was something greater than this. But this is where it started. But God's love for us started even further back than that. And so we're excited to know that the Bible tells us that God sent him here because he loved us so much, not to condemn us, but to save us. And so that was the cool part about all of this. And I'll tell you something. It's easy to get caught up in this time of year and Christmas stuff. It's easy to get caught up in the blinking lights and, and, and the Christmas trees and the presents and things like that. And I'll tell you, I love that stuff. I get caught up in ho, ho, ho and jingle bells and all that other stuff. I've got a Santa Claus suit at my house right now, and I better watch what I'm saying. And so, <laughs> that one's for me, all right, that I look at all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I got to remember the group that I'm with. All right, so anyways, it is easy to get caught up uh, in the Christmas season and think about Santa, presents, uh, the beauty of uh, all these flowers and, and the twinkling lights. There's nobody that will tell you that loves getting up on my roof more than me and getting those blinking lights going, and I love that stuff, but that's not what it's all about, and I know that. But the devil, he will distract us. And he'll take away something that's so precious as Jesus Christ's love for us. 
and distract us with some blinking lights and some reindeers and, and things like that. I mean, it's crazy. I've worked for Walmart. This is my 17th year with, with the company. And I've liked it, and sometimes I've not liked it. It's work, so there you go. That's all I can say. But there is one day out of the year that I look forward to to working at Walmart, probably more than any day that I've ever worked for Walmart. And I've only done it for seven years, and it's Black Friday. Now, most of you know what Black Friday sales are all about. And if you're here tonight and you have shopped a Black Friday sale, I'd like for you to raise your hand. Thank you. Don't be shy. Go ahead and raise it right on up. Where's my wife? I, she's the one that got me involved anyway. Thank you. You all know how crazy it gets on Black Friday, don't you? Oh, my goodness. And I love it. I love going to work, and that night it's so crazy. People have camped out for hours so they can get that one special limited gift that they can buy for little Johnny or for our little Susie, and, and they're ready to go. I mean, they'll line up and be in line. They'll Like this year. This year, they gave up their Thanksgiving holiday because the sales were early. Thanks a lot, Walmart. And uh, they take away a lot of the holiday, the Thanksgiving stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. This year, out of all of it, and I'll tell you what I love so much about it, I love the tension. I love the aggressiveness, and I love the competition that people have when they want to go out and get a special gift for their loved one. I love that. I love seeing them lined up, ready to charge. You know, that's our competitive spirit as human beings. But this year, I was disgusted. Because I was preparing for this Christmas play and reading all these lines that we have to read through. And, and on my breaks at night, I'll be reading through the Christmas play, trying to figure out how we can uh, scratch or add to some of the things that make it more applicable for uh, the kids. And I'm preparing for this, and God is working through me to, to prepare me, and then I go to Black Friday sale. This year probably was the most disgusting or the most disgusted I've ever been. And I'm sure this will go out on TV, but I don't care. Well, let me tell you something. This is how far distracted we've gotten away from Jesus Christ. This year, I actually was working in automotive. We were selling laptop computers back there. I didn't get to see all the craziness, but I watched it on YouTube later from the Berea store. And we had 19 uh, off-duty police officers that we hired just for this one event because we know it gets crazy. And then we hired 24 security guards to go along with them just in case we need help. And then all the associate workforce that was there that, that was scheduled to work that night. And there was one particular item on sale that night. It was a $30 Android straight talk phone. Now, it was about 20 yards down from where I was at. But this is how it all sums up for me when it comes to how far off track we've gotten at Christmas. And this isn't everybody. But there were hundreds of people gathered around this one display. And there was probably only 100 phones. Now, there were hundreds of people. And because of today's technology with cell phones with cameras, I got to watch this later on. Now, I heard the commotion but I didn't actually see it because once it started, I started doing my business. But what I watched later on absolutely floored me. There was a woman that was actually in the front of this display, and it was like a little teepee type of display. And she, when they went, the associates went in to cut the, the, the wrap off of it, the people just attacked it. They forget the associates. We're just going to attack this cell phone display. And they did. And they knocked the display over. So all these phones, most of them scattered onto the ground. So everybody started going for the phones. And then this lady in front, and I know this lady personally, she got knocked down and stomped on. And so they're stepping on her, using her as leverage to get to the phone. So they stopped walking on her, and now they're just standing on her. And these, there were police officers at this one display, and they're trying to get to her to help her out. And there was a 12-year-old boy that his mom sent him into that mess. Now, I would like to know... What mother sends their 12-year-old into piranha land? But that was what it was like. She sent her 12-year-old boy in there, and as he was trying to get a phone, an adult man punched him in the face trying to get the phone. Then another man was trying, after he grabbed his $30 phone, he started fighting his way out. And as he's fighting his way out, there was a woman who was standing there. She had no chance of getting a phone, but she was standing there anyway, probably waiting for somebody. And he punched her in the face trying to get out. And... There you go. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. 
How far do we take something as precious as the birth of Jesus Christ and we take it and where a person's life isn't valued, but for $30, we'll stand on them. So they're not even worth that. So then later on, um, I caught wind because these people got arrested and uh, they bring them back to the back and you can imagine the humiliation of a person who is fighting over a $2 sheet. A sheet, not a, you know, a sheet that goes on your bed. We had some $2 sheets and the, there were four ladies that got into a uh, fist fight over some sheets. Merry Christmas. We've gotten away from this stuff. And honestly, I tried to think about how this brings peace. And I love to give gifts, folks. I love to give them out. But there is no gift that's worth me punching a 12-year-old boy. There's no gift that's worth me getting in a fist fight or, or going and acting like, now nah, I want to get some things. I'm going to get in there. But I'll get there early or something, you know. But I'm not going to beat on a woman or stand on her to get that. Because for me, and I'm just talking about me, I understand all this stuff, and I, as much as I get involved in it, I still remember what my focus is. That Christmas is about Jesus Christ. That He loved us. And that we should be in love with Him. Let me tell you something. Jesus had His Black Friday too. Here's a cliche for you. His Black Friday was, in fact, actually black. We know that it was dark after he died on the cross. We know the veil got split in the middle when he died on the cross. We know the earth shook and the, and the earth quaked and people were scared. His Black Friday, he was out for a purchase too. Jesus was trying to purchase this, this gift. And, but this purchase was expensive. He was trying to purchase, check out, our sin, yours and mine, so that he could give us this gift of eternal life. He loved us so much that he paid for this gift the ultimate way. He paid the most that you could ever pay for a gift. He gave his life. And on his Black Friday, he was put through the ringer too. And he was beat on, stomped on, Punched in the face, hair pulled out on his face, torture. And we forget that. We remember this, but we forget that. I'm reminded, even as yesterday, um, of the many blessings that we get. And that I should love Jesus, fall in love with him over and over every single day because he blessed me with a, a wonderful wife, Beautiful son. He gave me a great family to learn from and a great family to hang out with. He gave me a great place to minister in and a great group of kids to minister to. But I remember that even as yesterday's events unfolded that I'm blessed with the life and that some people aren't. Sometimes God only blesses you with a couple months to be with a loved one. Or he gives you something so special as a baby and then at the last minute he takes it away. Not because that you've done anything wrong, but that's what he trusted you with and for the amount of time that he trusted you with, that's it. And I think about my son and my wife and my mom and my brothers and my sister and my brother-in-law who's overseas right now. And I remember I only have so much time to be with them because the Bible says in Proverbs 27.1, that I'm not to boast of tomorrow because I don't know what today is going to bring. But I'm reminded of this one verse. And Michael, Michael in our play summed it up when he was asked, what would you give Jesus? And he said all the things that you could see on that list right there, those are nice, but the greatest gift that he thought he could give was himself. You see, in Luke chapter 19... In verse 10 it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's us. And as many times as I've wanted to give my gift, because I've accepted Jesus in my heart, and I have that wonderful gift of eternal life, and most of these kids and most of you have done that too, 
My gift of myself to him sometimes is probably a gift that he would probably want to return. It's not that good of a gift because I sin and I mess up. But the cool part about it all, 1 John 1, 9 says that if I ask, he's faithful and just to forgive me of those sins and cleanse me from the unrighteousness of my life. And then I remember this, that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. So outside of these four walls, and even in here tonight, are folks who are lost. You've never asked Jesus to come into your heart. Matter of fact, the gift that I'm talking about of eternal life, here's how simple it is. Jesus was the one that paid it all. He didn't use a credit card. He didn't pay in cash. He paid with his life. And he took your sin, the sin, the bad things that you do, the wrong things that you do, and he said, I'm going to die for that. And I'm going to die for you. And I'm going to die for her and for him and for this little one. And I'm going to take that all on me so you don't have to. And here's the gift. He just holds it out there and he says, all you have to do to get this gift is accept it. Believe. Believe that Jesus died for your sins. Believe that when he did die, that he rose from the grave. And believe with all your heart. That's what he said. If you'll believe on him, you will be saved. So I'm asking you here tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and you came because you wanted to see your uh, little kid, your little child come up here and sing and, 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 and do a Christmas play. And that's great. I'm glad you did. But guess what? You came and heard the truth tonight. That's how God got you in here. I like it. I like the sneakiness of it. He wanted you to hear a message, and he will do whatever he's got to do. You know, I'm reminded of a great verse my dad used to say, 1 Corinthians 9.22. When I'm with the weak, I become weak so that I can lead them to Christ. I am all things to all men so that some may be saved. And God knew that not everybody would accept him. He gave us the free will to, to choose whether or not we wanted Jesus in our life. How could you not want Jesus? The sin you've committed, the things you've done, why wouldn't you? If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, then here's all I ask you to do. If you want to know him, then I just ask that you bow your heads, and I'm going to ask everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. If you want to know Jesus in your heart, you want to have Jesus experience the true meaning of Christmas. And here's all you have to do. Say, Lord Jesus, I am so sorry for my sins. I believe with all my heart that you lived on this earth, that you died for my sins, and that you rose from the grave. I'm asking you to come live in my heart. If you'll say that and mean it, I believe you're born again. You might be here tonight and you've accepted the gift. You're sitting here as a Christian tonight. A bunch of boys and girls are here tonight. They've accepted Jesus in their heart. Most of you, I've seen you walk down the aisle. But maybe the gift of yourself that you've given Jesus has probably worn thin. Maybe you've gotten sidetracked or distracted and let Satan distract you with little petty things. Things that don't matter like your family does. Like seeing a lost person come to Christ. Maybe your gift needs to have a little shine put on it. Maybe you just need to ask God to forgive you of your sins. And then ask God where you can serve at so that you can continue your gift on. There's a great many things you can do right here, here at Bible Baptist. But there's a great many things that we can do as a Bible Baptist church body to reach out to this community. And I ask that you do that. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much. Thank you for giving us another day on this earth to, to praise your holy name. I thank you for giving us a place where we can come and worship you. And I thank you for giving us a message tonight that can pierce the heart of the simplest person. Because you did all the hard work. All we have to do is believe. And even though that we fail and we mess up and we sin, God, you still loved us enough to send your own son. 
to die on that cross for us. And I pray that God tonight, if there's one that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, I pray tonight that you'll make that a reality for them. Give them the strength and the courage to say, I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life and accept him. And for that one that's here tonight, Lord, that may know you as their Savior, maybe they got off path a little bit. That's okay. You still love them. And your word says so. But God, they need to get back on track. We need to get fired up and share this message with the world. And I pray, God, that you'll make that the priority in their life is to serve and love you and to fall back in love with Jesus Christ. I ask these things, God, because I believe in you and I believe that you'll do this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Brother Don, that's it. Next Sunday night, here's the special invitation. We are having our church Christmas dinner, and that's for whoever's here. I mean, we're not going to come get you, so you have to come here, all right? There's going to be some good food, some good soup, some good sandwiches, and some good hangout time. So we want you guys to come and enjoy that with us. That's next Sunday night. Um, and uh, thank you. All right. Hello. Oh. The KFC kids would like to thank Brother Jared, Miss Malia, Brother Darren, Miss Stella, Steve-O, for, uh, for all of their hard work helping us learn this play and always being there for us, no matter what. We love you all. There they are. Now I want to ask you all to stand, and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. I want to say thank you to those of you who came here tonight. Some of you drove a long way, and we're so glad you got to come and be a part of this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let these guys know. They're the ones doing all the work tonight, and God sure did use them. Let's give them one big round of applause one more, one more time. Brother Devin, I love when you come and hang out with us. Will you, uh, will you dismiss us in prayer tonight?